Welcome to my channel on Generative AI Applications. Today I want to talk about an interesting new um, report that I came across called MetaGPT. This is pretty recent, just a few weeks old, um, and it's become very, very popular. Um, so what this uh, report does is it builds um, a, a framework where it uses different chatbots to define a multi-agent environment, and then these agents collaborate to do complex tasks. Uh, so in this particular case, like I've tested this on building different kinds of like softwares, like games or uh, forecasting models, and it does it does pretty well. You just have to define your requirements in one place, and then you can see that the framework um, defines different roles. Um, so there's going to be a boss, there's going to be a product manager who defines like the criteria. Then there's an actual engineer who writes the code, and there's a QA tester that runs tests. So through these carefully um, orchestrated um, sort of team of agents, it's able to actually build a really complex software. Um, I um, was quite amazed for what it's able to do and it, it, it definitely is, is the next step on where all these agents are going in terms of collaborating and, and doing bigger, bigger tasks. So I'll go through the, the how to get the repo set up and how to, how to run it um, and stuff very soon. Uh, but I wanted to uh, mention one thing here. So um, there are a few multi-agent frameworks that that you know have played with in the past. But one typical problem that tends to happen is that um, different as you define kind of the persona for different agents, you'll find that um, the agents are not very defined in their outputs. Like they can hallucinate, they can give wrong outputs, and the system basically devolves into chaos um, in a few turns. Um, what I found is that this um, this particular repo and then the associated paper goes through um, tips and techniques that they've implemented to stop this, a tip to kind of prevent this. Um, and the way they did that is to have very clear defined personas, um, uh, which would typically be there in a in a software software company. Um, and then each um, each role has to give their output in a standard format. This limits the, the amount of variance that the language model can actually introduce. Plus, they uh, built a common message sharing platform where all the agents can put in their outputs so everyone can collaborate um, using it, the, looking at the same thing. So um, the code and software in general here, the output here is not perfect. Um, every time that I've built code through it, 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 it has small errors, but, but the amount of time it saves is immense. With just, you know, four or five minutes of tinkering, you can figure out the error and then you can have a pretty good application running. Okay, so um, the installation instructions here are quite simple. You just have to install this Mermaid um, JS package through NPM, which is used for a bunch of visualizations. And then uh, mainly you need to get clone this repo and run um, setup.install. Uh, so I was uh, running this on a MacBook and I didn't have any trouble installing. But in case you do have trouble, they have pointed to a Docker, um, a Docker-based solution where you can get this repo up and running. Okay, so um, once you get the repo installed, there is not much you have to do. Um, you can, there is a config.yaml file that you have to put in your different uh, keys in, so you can specify your OpenAI key. By default, you can see it's using the GPT-4 model. Um, if you do want the agent to be able to search the web, then you can uh, provide it to your SERP API key. Uh, once you are done with this step, you need to copy the config.yaml um, to the key.yaml um, with your keys in, and, and that's about it. So to sort of to get the code uh, running, uh, you have to, for example, here I'll kind of go here. So. You go to the main page here and then you do python startup.py and you set up your instructions. So for example, the instruction here can be build me a simple tick tag to game that I can play against an AI agent. I want to control this game using CLI. That's about it. So once you do that, um, you can see it starts by loading that config and then um, already it's kind of started, it's defined its maximum amount of, uh, you know, 
GPT is spent to be three dollars if the first dollar defined was a product manager who is going to write the requirements based on based on the instructions you you gave and so it's it's said that you know it needs to be a simple game but has to have a AI opponent that can give a challenging gameplay um, and then it has to be controlled through a command line interface okay very cool so um so you can so basically you know once you kick that off uh, it starts to uh, different you know roles start to do different things as one of the agents is going to come and do some competitive analysis here look at you know other options out there okay um so you'll see that it takes like uh, about three to four minutes for this to, to finish so i'm gonna jump off to one of my old experiments here uh, where i had uh, built out this game and show you the output that i got there so um, one interesting output is that once you're done, you'll see the output appears in the workspace uh, folder. Uh, what I found really cool is that it will generate the different Python files, but then at the same time, it also spends a lot of time doing documentation. So um, I found this amazing. So it's kind of told me that there's going to be these four files um, and then it's um, given a flow of how control can go between them. define the different functions each of the uh, classes will have um, so overall like very very cool output not just in sort of designing the the whole product the whole game but also um, in time terms of doing the documentation um, so I'll kind of show you the the files so you see that this the four files that I got to my implementation were ai.py cli.py game.py and main.py um, as you can see here, they are very well flushed out. The code is written well for different classes. Um, and then there's a main.py, which is a starting point. So one fair warning here is that I've played this and made like, you know, experimented with five or six different outputs from here. Generally, I find the outputs do have small typos. It's not 100% it's not ready, but I'll say it's kind of 90% ready. So I had to uh, almost always like do a little bit of work to clean out things. Okay, so I'm gonna um, show you my experiments with uh, playing this tic-tac-toe game that it kind of built out. So let's go to the right folder. Okay, so this is where our four files are. You just have to enter main.py. Okay, and so this is the boarded build. It's asking me to make a move so i choose five and then you see automatically the ai does a move here um it's my turn here so i'm gonna choose three okay so it kind of blocked me here and now i'm gonna choose okay this is not the best move from the ai here uh, but i'm gonna choose seven here and then it says okay you win the game uh, so this is one example of a game I built. Uh, another one that is kind of more relevant to what I do um, is just to have it do a machine learning task. So um, the instruction I gave it here was to, oh boy, um, yeah, there we are. Okay, anyways, I might have lost the, the screen here, but the instruction I gave it in this case was to build me a time series forecasting model. Um, and the way I kind of define that is uh, use pandas and sklearn to build a time series forecasting model where I'll give you as input uh, two files, train.csv and test.csv, um, and as well as the target variable. And then you have to train the model, uh, evaluate it on test set, and give me um, the plots out. So um, I was really impressed. I saw that it had built out a few modules. It built out a, a Python module for training the time series model, another one for kind of doing all the plotting. Um, and I'll show you the code it wrote here. So it wrote out these three, four files. This is the main.py for reading and processing, pre-processing everything, building the time series model. Um, and this is the plotter that it automatically wrote, made a utils file, which showed the different utils and stuff. So. Um, even with this code, I had to make small changes. Um, and partly this is kind of my bad, like um, the file that I gave it had some string variables and it kind of 
got some this I added some uh, feature creation code related to that but I again found that the code was uh, was a pretty good starting point uh, to an experiment so I'll show you how it um, did on the time series stuff as well let's go to that code that it wrote okay so same here um, the main code is in main.py and I need to now specify the path to my data uh, the data set that I used was was a fairly simple pollution prediction kind of um, data set so I'm going to specify the path here and I'm also going to specify the path to the test file Okay, uh, wow, that was quite fast. So what it did was it uh, trained the model, it did feature engineering, it trained the model, and then it gave me the different MSC scores that it calculated. Um, and then finally it plotted out its predictions. The predictions weren't too good because I'd limited it to using only a skill learn model. Um, but um, I have to say it's a, it's a pretty good start um, to, to things, right? Um, yeah, I, I hope you guys love um i hope you guys will you know give this repo a shot and let me know your comments and in, in the feedback thank you